I love what it says in Revelation 13, verse 8, where it describes Jesus as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Think for just a moment what this actually means. It means that this whole plan of salvation that we know about was not God's plan B. It was planned from the very beginning. God was not taken off guard when man fell in the Garden of Eden. He already knew that it was going to happen. He had already made provision for it, and he had already set in motion a plan that would culminate with the cross. When Adam and Eve partook of that forbidden fruit, which was arguably the most epic failure in history, God wasn't surprised. In fact, their failure had already been factored into his plan, and provision had already been made for their redemption. So my friend, if you have failed, be encouraged by this thought. Before God called you, before you were saved, in fact, before you were even born, God knew exactly how your life would play out. Before you'd even made one mistake, God took all your future failures into account. And in his infinite wisdom and love, he preempted your blunders with a plan to turn your tragedy into a triumph in the end. My friend, with this knowledge, you can be confident that if you are still breathing right now, it's not too late for God to intervene and restore what the locusts and the canker worm have eaten. Now, having said these things, it's important for me to, to make clear that disobedience is not a trivial matter, and I am not trying to trivialize it. God's grace does not guarantee that we'll never have to live with the negative consequences of our actions. In fact, many times, even though God forgives and restores, there are still scars that remain from disobedience. And often the process of correcting our mistakes can be a long and painful one, at least longer than it would have been had we obeyed. For example, you know the story of Jonah. He was called to go to Nineveh. The best way would have obviously been by ship, but because he disobeyed, he chose the hard way instead. And although he did ultimately make it to Nineveh, by the time he arrived, he, he arrived, he had been through a storm, he'd been thrown off a ship, he'd been swallowed by a fish, he spent three days inside the fish, and then was vomited out on the beach. Yeah, Jonah made it to Nineveh all right, but the first option would have definitely been a better one. So my friend, this is a serious matter that we're talking about here. It's very important. If you've missed the perfect will of God in your life, I'm going to give you five steps that you need to take right away. And the first step is so simple, it will almost seem like an insult to your intelligence. Stop. If you are going in the wrong direction, my friend, before you do anything else, you need to stop. Now, as obvious and as elementary as this sounds, it is a real issue. You know, if we feel we've blown it, sometimes there's a temptation just to keep going. People who are trying to lose weight on a strict diet struggle with this all the time. Maybe they were doing really good for a few weeks. They lost a few pounds, and then a holiday came. They ruined their diet for a few days in a row. They gain a few pounds back, and then rather than stopping the downward spiral, they say, what's the use? I've already blown it. They just give in, and they just give up. My friend, listen, if you are on the wrong track right now, you need to realize that every day you continue on that path is a day you will never get back. Don't waste one more day or one more hour moving in the wrong direction. Stop now in Jesus' name. 